All right, I have Harrison and Carter and Clara down here at the font with me where we start our service by sharing some good news each week. And I have some good news that y'all need to hear. Oh, look, it's Oliver, hi. And I have some good news to share this week, and that is that it is still Easter. Last week was this big Easter celebration, but today it is still Easter, and it's gonna be Easter for a few more weeks. Now, I do not have any chocolate, just to be clear. But the way we're going to celebrate that it is still Easter today is with, I want you to turn around and look at these first two pews here. Do y'all see these, these young ladies in these, in these black dresses? This is the Birmingham Girls Choir Intermezzo Choir, and they are going to sing for us, and they've been doing this for years. They come the second Sunday of Easter, and they sing here at Edgewood, and that is good news. I'm going to fill this font with water, and then y'all can go have your seat, okay? Friends, grace to you and peace and welcome to worship here at Edgewood Presbyterian Church on this second Sunday of Easter with a special welcome to our Birmingham Girls Choir and their family and friends who are here. Thank you for joining us this morning. I certainly recognize some of your faces from hanging out in the hallways on Tuesday nights. And I am so glad that you are here this morning. It's been a while since the Girls Choir was here with us for worship. I'm glad that you get to meet our congregation, uh, this wonderful, weird, loving crew of folks who are passionate about justice and holy laughter and taking Jesus far more seriously than we take ourselves. Friends, I invite you now to please rise in body or spirit and join Fran in the responsive call to worship. The Lord has swallowed up death forever. From the wicked vanity of wickedness and the bread that only perishes. From the power of the oppressor and the hardness of our own hearts. From the valley of dry bones and the furnace of blazing fire. From the belly of the beast and the disgrace of exile, Christ is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of all, the risen Christ taught from scripture of his death, resurrection, and ascension into your glorious presence. May the living Lord breathe on us his peace, that our eyes may be open to recognizing him in breaking bread, and to follow wherever he leads, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Please be seated. Our God says, come, let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. Before God, with all the people of God, let us confess our brokenness and make room for healing. Please join me in the prayer that is bold in your worship folder. God of all hope and joy, we confess that we continue to live incompletely. We say that we have not seen you, even when you stand among us now. Forgive us, God of grace. Teach us to delight in your way, to seek you with all our hearts, and to trust in your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We now share with you in silence the burdens of our hearts. Friends, hear the good news. Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, a new life has begun. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and restored to new life. Let us pray. Living God, by your Holy Spirit, open our eyes to see the new light of this day. Open our lips to tell of the empty tomb. Open our hearts to believe the good news. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In our lesson from the Hebrew Scriptures, the prophet Isaiah tells of a celebratory feast of redemption. Listen to these words of hope. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And God will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. God will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and will take away the disgrace of the people of God from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God, for whom we have waited, so that God might save us. This is the Lord, for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in God's salvation. 
This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 150 closes the book of Psalms with simple and unadulterated praise. After each verse, your response will be, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give praise to God's sanctuary. Give praise in God's mighty firmament. Praise the Lord. Give praise for God's mighty deeds. Give praise according to God's surpassing greatness. Praise the Lord. Praise God with trumpet sound. Praise with lute and harp. Praise the Lord. Praise God with tambourine and dance. Praise with strings and pipe. Praise the Lord. Praise God with clanging cymbals. Praise with loud clashing cymbals. Praise the Lord. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Holy wisdom, holy word. Our third reading is from the Gospel of Luke, and it picks up right after those very first preachers of the Gospel, the first preachers of the Gospel, Mary Magdalene, and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women who went to the tomb, right after they told the men about the empty tomb and were dismissed out of hand. But then Peter went to investigate. It's still Easter as this next piece of the story unfolds. Let us listen for what the Spirit is saying to the church today. Now on that same day, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself joined them on their journey, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? Jesus asked them, What things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. All these things happened three days ago, but there's more. Some women from our group have left us stunned. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when, they, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, 
and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself, himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This is the gospel of Christ for the people of God. Praise to you, O Christ. Birmingham Girls Choir folks, if the EPC, the Edgewood Presbyterian Church congregation, looks a little loopy, if we are a little out of sorts this morning, if we are a little confused at times, please bear with us. You see, last Sunday was our first Easter back in this space since 2019. And so last week, we pulled out all of the stops, and a week later, I'll be honest, it kind of feels like we just got home from a wild and raucous party. But we are here to welcome you. For about a year and a half of this pandemic that we're in, we worshipped exclusively on Zoom. As a small but vibrant church, we had to get real creative about how we could maintain our connection to each other and how we could maintain a sense of the holy in our time together. It was tricky, but on the very first Sunday of Zoom Church in March of 2020, on that very first Sunday, we stumbled upon some words that stuck with us through this whole ordeal. These words came to us because we had to figure out how to celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper while we were not actually gathered together. With permission from our denomination in our homes, with bread or crackers and with juice or wine, we remembered that the table that Christ invites us to is not bound by time or space. And each week we prayed and I said the sacred words of institution that we'll share later in the service. And then every week, we broke bread in our little Zoom rectangles. And we declared these words to our family and friends. I recognize Christ in you. And then we raised our cups or our tumblers or our coffee mugs or our glasses in what we came to call a holy toast. And we said to one another, my heart is burning for God's people. That was our little Zoom communion liturgy. And you might recognize that that improvised communion liturgy for all those Zoom worship services was pulled directly from this story. This story about these disciples, Cleopas and his traveling companion. This story about these two and their run-in with the risen Christ on the road to Emmaus. 
For this congregation, as a strategy for congregational survival, we remembered each week that Jesus was among us in the eyes of our neighbors, and that his presence stirred us, stirred within our hearts a longing for our community. So this story is special to us. Y'all, the halls of this small church building were far too quiet for far too long. And then last summer, longtime friends, Meredith DeVore and Margaret Heron and the new to me Tori Moore arrived with auditions for the Birmingham Girls Choir. And I am here to tell you that the return of well-trained, powerful, holy voices to the soundscape of Tuesday nights at Edgewood has helped me remember what beauty and dedication and joy sound like. And I need to hear those sounds in a world that sounds like sirens and bombs and lament on so many other days. So thank you. Orthodox Ukrainian Christians celebrated Easter this morning by gathering for worship to tell the story of resurrection. And they collected food baskets for their troops. And they remembered the promises of the empty tomb. Into that broken world come these voices on Tuesday night to lift me up. To remember. That word remember, remember. Remember to be mindful again, to be aware of again, remember. So much of what Christians do in worship is done for the purpose of making us mindful again of who we are and, and where we have been and to whom we belong and how we are called to be in this broken world. Since the last time the Birmingham Girls Choir sang in worship here at Edgewood, this congregation has gotten some new people. And I know that BGC has, has as well. And so as we gather to remember, we don't look exactly like we did the last time. But that's resurrection. Resurrection, the, the life that shows up with a big surprise when death has just spiked the football, Resurrection means that things cannot be exactly as they were before. The risen Christ and, and his disciples and the communities that have refused to forget their stories over the centuries, they all bear the wounds of death, even as they teem with wild new possibilities of resurrection life. On the road to Emmaus, Cleopas and his companion don't recognize Jesus when he approaches them. Now, perhaps this was a trauma response. These followers of Jesus had been through a lot. They were in shock from the violence that had been unleashed upon their rabbi from the empire and those who conspired, uh, conspired with the empire. Maybe they were walking around in a daze from the devastation of having everything that they had pointed their lives toward come crashing down around them. Maybe they were disoriented from the startling news that morning that the tomb was not how they had left it on Friday night. Or perhaps it was some sort of spiritual face blindness cast upon them from the heavens. In any case, they don't recognize him. They simply couldn't fully open their minds to the idea of Jesus being right there with them, walking with them. So they tell this stranger what has happened, and he has an interpretation. And that interpretation gets the gears going for Cleopas and his companion. The pieces start to come together for them. They will testify later that their hearts were burning within them while he talked. This unrecognized Jesus teaches them and reminds them of what they already know, what he had told them before about death, 
and resurrection. And somewhere, somewhere within them, for Cleopas and his companions, somewhere within them, they remember something. They remember something. I've often wondered if this was the first time Jesus went out on Easter. If this was the first time he had this exact conversation that day. Was this the first pair of disciples he'd talked to? Was this the first road that he'd walked? Was this the first time he'd gone through the interpretation of the scriptures? Or maybe had he done this with others? And then when he walked ahead as if he were going on, he was never revealed to them as anything but a know-it-all stranger. I wonder if he'd been waiting to hear this. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. Cleopas and his companion see the night creeping in as they enter a new village. They don't know if this stranger they've met will be okay. They don't know if he has food or shelter. And so they open their hearts in hospitality. They invite him to stay with them. They welcome him. They remember to take care of their neighbor. And because they do that, because they do that, they don't miss it. They get to be at the table as he takes and blesses and breaks and gives. These actions that disciples of Jesus had seen before from him. They saw it at the, at the feeding of the 5,000. They saw it, of course, at the Last Supper and probably countless other times. Take, bless, break, give. Their invitation to this stranger leads to Christ's table. And Jesus takes and blesses and breaks and gives, and suddenly they recognize him. They remember. They see him. They lay eyes on him. They are now witnesses to the resurrection. Jesus is made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Cleopas and his companion, for you word nerds, companion from words that mean together with and bread, companion. Cleopas and his companion and later the others, they're able to remember when Jesus feeds them and eats with them. He re members them, puts them back together, makes their broken selves and broken hearts whole. The violent wrath of the empire and those collaborators had tried to dismember this Jesus movement, this ragtag band of disciples. Jesus had spent the previous few years reminding them of God's commandments, reminding them of the cries of the prophets to care for the most vulnerable and to prioritize, prioritize the love of neighbor over religion and to value faithfulness to God's justice more than wealth. He reminded them that if they showed compassion to one another, nothing could stop God's love. He reminded them of God's ancient promises of liberation, and he made new promises. And the old promises and the new promises all threatened the power of the status quo. And so this movement needed to be broken. They tried to dismember the movement by attacking the body, the flesh and blood body of its priest and prophet and bread breaker and healer and boundary crosser. They pierced and broke and buried the body. But the body remembers. When bread is broken, the members of the body come back together and are mindful and aware again of who we are and why we are here. May we be about work that remembers, telling the old stories and the new ones of what God has done in our midst. 
We are called to remember through scripture and prayer and beautiful singing. We are invited to do the things that help us be put back together when life has tossed us to and fro and broken us apart. To say, peace be with you, as Christ did. To break bread together. To raise a holy toast together. And to let our hearts burn and recognize Christ's presence among us. May we be about work that remembers, putting back together what the cruel structures of this world will try to tear apart. Putting back together the broken body of Christ, moving beyond the divisions cleaved between us in favor of resurrection life that honors every child of God, every child of God, honors every child of God by offering them education that is honest, and health care that treats them with dignity and compassion, offers them sacred space that is safe and brave enough to encompass courageous acts of good news, as well as holy curiosity and faithful doubt. May we be about work that remembers, with our hearts opened in invitation with our minds opened to the Holy Spirit, with our eyes opened in recognition. May we remember what it means to hope audaciously and to live lavishly as people who have been put together, put back together by Christ. Amen. Friends, the way we have been passing the peace here at Edgewood is that uh, after I say the, Christ, the peace of Christ be with you and you all say and also with you, you can then turn to your neighbors and if you're comfortable, handshakes, hugs, high fives, fist bumps, elbows, peace signs, whatever works for you uh, to make you comfortable while also sharing the peace of Christ with your neighbor. In the gospel, according to John, Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Let us all now share the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of Christ be with you all.
A few announcements for the good of the community. After worship, we have our Sunday school classes that are happening. And uh, we also have a project here that is uh, part of a, a larger community project of feeding our neighbors. Um, and we will be making lunches up in the kitchen. And I'm calling out for my Edgewood folks, we could use some hands if you haven't noticed on top of everything else that's been weird this morning, our elevator is broken. And so uh, we need some extra hands to haul the uh, groceries upstairs so that we can make those lunches. So uh, after worship, go out, grab something off the cart and bring it upstairs, please. This afternoon, BYG, we do our youth group uh, in conjunction with four other churches, uh, and we call it the Presbyterian Birmingham Youth Group. We are meeting this afternoon after a couple weeks off uh, at 4 p.m. at First Presbyterian Church. That's downtown Birmingham, 4th Avenue North. Um, if you have questions, talk to me or Amy Crow or Fran Woodruff, uh, and we will send you in the right direction. While I'm speaking about our youth, I should let you know there's a giant wall of uh, envelopes out in the narthex of the church with numbers on it, and that is a fundraiser for our youth. Um, for those of you who are not in the Presbyterian world, Montreat, North Carolina is holy ground to Presbyterians. And every year we send our high school youth up to Montreat, North Carolina for a youth conference that is filled with um, wonderful preaching and amazing music and lots and lots of fun in one of the most beautiful places in the world. And so that uh, board out there is our fundraiser and we ask folks to uh, if you choose to grab an envelope with a, nu with a number on it, put that many dollars in and return it to the church in support of that, uh, that program so that we can send our kids and have enough money for gas and pizza and all the good stuff. Um, and you'll find inside those envelopes a little note from one of our youth in each envelope as well. Later this week, uh, we, on Wednesday night, we have our Fierce Love book study, by, uh, book by the Reverend Dr. Jackie Lewis. Uh, we are up to chapter eight. We meet upstairs in the fellowship hall and on Zoom. Uh, it's not too late to join us for these last few chapters. On Friday morning, our group meets at 7 a.m. to read a book called uh, In Defense of Kindness. And we are just about done with that book. And so this Friday by Zoom, we have the author of the book, the Reverend Bruce Reyes Chow, zooming in from California at 5 a.m. Uh, his time to meet with us and answer our questions. And uh, I think the group, the Friday morning group has some uh, uh, really thoughtful questions and also some really fun questions for Bruce. I wanna mention one more fundraiser. Um, if you are, when you leave the church, if you look to your left, there's a table with a couple of gift baskets there and you'll see and all the explanation is there, but it's a fundraiser for uh, Ukrainian refugees that we're doing our mission committee. Um, we're having a, a bit of a raffle and then some items that you can just purchase and all those funds are going to uh, go to refugee work in uh, Eastern Europe. Friends, our uh, ushers are about to come down with the offering plates. And if you uh, do not want to deal with the plate, there's also an offering box at the back. You should know that 10 cents of every dollar given to this congregation goes right out the door uh, to serve uh, mission partners here in Birmingham, around the state of Alabama, around the country, and around the world. And uh, as they come forward, I think the girls' choir is going to come up and sing. So let me say that the Lord prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. God anoints us with oil. Our cups overflow. Let us offer our lives to the Lord.
Let me start with some instructions. After the bread has been broken and the cup has been poured, I will invite you to come to this welcome table. I invite you to come down via the center aisle. I will offer you the bread of heaven. Please tear a piece uh, of bread from the loaf, big enough that you don't have to dip your fingers into the cup, and then move to the stations where the elders will offer you uh, the cup of the new covenant. The blue cups have grape juice. The brown cups have wine. Um, dip your uh, bread into the juice or wine and partake of the elements as you return via the side aisle. If you require a gluten-free option, Lynn over here, raise your hand, Lynn. Lynn over there will have the gluten-free option on the far right. Um, and if you don't want to be in our space and you're more comfortable serving yourself, there's a station to the far left over by the window where you can get a piece of bread and a cup um, and partake as you return uh, via the side aisle. Does that make sense to everybody? Excellent. Well, then let me tell you that this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at table in the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke the bread and he gave it to them. And suddenly their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Friends, we come to this table that is not Edgewood's table. It's not a Presbyterian table. This is Christ's table. Whether you have been to this table many times in another church or this one, or whether you have never been here before, you are invited to this meal, and we mean it. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and our greatest joy to give you all thanks and praise, eternal God, creator and ruler of the universe. At your word, the earth was made and spun in its courses among the planets. Your hand formed us from the dust of the earth and set us among all your creatures to love and to serve you. O oh God, when we were unfaithful to you, you kept faith with us. Your love remained steadfast. When we were enslaved in Egypt, you broke the bonds of our oppression and brought us through the sea to freedom and made covenant to be our God. By a pillar of fire, you led us through the desert to a land flowing with milk and honey and set before us the way of life. You spoke of love and justice through the prophets and in the word made flesh, you lived among us, manifesting your glory. Christ died that we might live and Christ is risen to raise us to new life. Therefore, we join with heavenly choirs and the faithful of every time and place, as the people say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God, and blessed is your son, Jesus. He was born a child in Palestine, a brown-skinned child, the child of a teenage mom, a Jewish child, a poor child, a child born under the thumb of an emperor. He was a refugee. His family worked with their hands. He broke bread with the unclean, the poor, the cast out, the marginalized, the broken, and the brokenhearted. He was ordered to die by the government in conspiracy with religious leaders. But death could not hold him. The tomb could not contain him. Together, O oh God, we are his resurrection people, and we are resilient. Remembering your goodness and grace, O oh God, we offer ourselves to you with gratitude as we share this joyful feast. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and cup, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Nourished at this table, O God, may we know Christ's redemptive love and live a new life in him. Give us who are fed at, this, at his hand grace to share our bread with the hungry and with the hungry of heart. 
Keep us ever faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And now with the boldness of the children of God, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us in whatever translation, whatever version, whatever language is most meaningful to you, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you, and do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup saying, this is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving grace of our Lord until he comes. We recognize Christ in one another. Our hearts are burning for God's people. Friends, come now to the welcome table.
We have collected a few prayers from the congregation here. Joanne Fenley asks us to pray for Haley Childers that she may find her way and a special prayer for her friend who is suffering. We continue to pray for the grandnephew of Pat and Wayne McLaughlin, who is headed for brain surgery next week. We pray for those doctor's hands and for the whole family around him. Friends, let us pray. O God, with faces touched by the light of a new day and hearts warmed by our prayers and praises, we come before you to pray for the needs of our world. Into the joy of this Easter season, we raise those who are struggling with illness, those struggling with despair over their lives or with the breakdown of relationships. May the grace of Christ shine upon them. And, O oh God, into the joy of this Easter season, we bring those places in our world where war and violence and poverty and need are the experiences of everyday life. May the love of Christ shine upon them. And, O oh God, into this hope of the Easter season, we hold in our hearts the pain of those who are suffering in ways that we can't name or imagine or are even aware of. May the hope of Christ shine upon them. And into the love of this Easter season, we bring ourselves, our private struggles, our hearts, yearnings, the dreams that we can't bear to share, the potential we seek to fulfill. May the grace of Christ shine upon us. And gracious God, we give you thanks that by the witness of your word and the sharing of this meal, you have opened our hearts and eyes to the presence of Christ among us. Now send us forth from this place by the power of your spirit to tell this good news to the world. The Lord has risen indeed. Amen.
invite you all to be seated just for a second, and I'll invite any kids out there to join me on the steps. Like, oh, here comes Oliver. Excellent. Hey, Oliver. Come on, buddy. Maybe your dad will come with you if you, oh, or not. Come on. I don't know if you caught the good news, Oliver. It's still Easter. It is still Easter, and we are celebrating. And I have been thinking about food all week. Miss Fran back there, Miss Fran, would you wave your arm way up in the sky? Miss Fran once told me that she thought that in the time when Jesus died and then Easter came, that all the people who loved Jesus, all his friends and family, they were probably feeding each other. And they were, because that's what we do when we're scared and when we're sad and when we're happy, they were feeding each other. And today's Bible story was about Jesus breaking bread with his friends and then eating some fish later on. And they were like, oh my goodness, it's Jesus. And they remembered all the love in their hearts when they ate together. So I want us to remember that this week, whenever we're eating, if we're eating with someone else, we can remember that God is with us. If we're eating alone, we can remember that God is with us and we can give thanks for our food and we can give joy. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for feeding us for bread and friends and family and tables. Show us how to share with our neighbors. You love us and we love you. Amen. All right. I think we're going to stand up and we're going to invite everyone else to rise in body or spirit for the closing benediction, charge of benediction. All right. Friends, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, and help the suffering. Honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Alleluia. Amen.